Iron and its role against cancer, part two. Hello, it's Dr. Colleen Huber, a naturopathic medical doctor here on October 30, 2019 in Tempe, Arizona. Now in the second part of my discussion about iron and its role against cancer. In my previous video, we discussed the importance of iron in the citric acid cycle here, helping to drive the citric acid cycle by playing a part with four different enzymes at the beginning of the cycle makes iron a very useful tool in diverting body resources away from the cancer pathway. Yet how did conventional medicine get so confused about the role of iron in cancer? They actually assumed that iron favored cancer because of this activity. In fact, the common misconception about iron and cancer arose in the first place due to ignoring or not understanding metabolic mechanisms regarding how cancer arises in the body in the first place, how it grows and thrives, and how, on the other hand, we can use metabolic mechanisms to defeat and kill cancer. So what happened was some researchers noted that with iron in the mitochondria, the citric acid cycle is enhanced, and oxidative phosphorylation is also enhanced, which I'll discuss in a minute. And the whole mitochondria functions better with iron. So they mistakenly assumed that this would be advantageous for the whole cancer cell. What they had failed to observe was cancer cells are primarily distinguished for having few and damaged mitochondria. So cancer cells had little to gain from all of this robust mitochondrial activity. It was normal cells and their mitochondria, not cancer cells, strengthened by the boosting of mitochondrial activity. And this enables normal cells to crowd out and starve out cancer cells. Those researchers also failed to notice that when you deplete a cell of iron, when you take iron away, you then favor the lactate pathway, which is the pro-cancer pathway here. So very unfortunately, misconceptions became perpetuated all because they failed to learn from Dr. Otto Warburg's work when he discovered this in the first place. There is yet another way in which iron favors normal metabolism over cancer metabolism. And that is that iron is essential for the creation of new red blood cells, which contain hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is necessary for carrying oxygen through your body. Hemoglobin is the vehicle for oxygen. It is not enough to bring oxygen into your lungs. That oxygen must be carried absolutely everywhere that you want your tissues to stay alive. In other words, everywhere. Iron is essential to that, to preventing this initial cause of cancer. Now, maybe you remember a few videos back in the series where we discussed how cancer arises in the first place. Where does cancer come from? It comes from a lack of oxygen to the mitochondria, which damaged this mitochondria and forced metabolism into an alternate route. This route here, outside of the mitochondria. This route that goes from pyruvate to lactate. Not only is iron necessary to the robust function of the citric acid cycle, which draws our energies away from the cancer pathway, but iron has more importance. Iron is directly involved in transfer of electrons here, actually in all four complexes of the electron transport chain. It is necessary in the pass-through of electrons to cytochrome C, which enables complexes 3 and 4 to work well. Here is a drawing from iStack showing iron facilitating or enabling electron transfer in the first three complexes. Wow, nothing else, no other element is so versatile and so widely used in the electron transport chain as is iron. Just think about that research we just looked at. Just think about this problem of low iron slowing down this mitochondrial metabolism. Just think of all the women with menorrhagia, that is women who have long, intense menstrual periods, bleeding away so much of their iron over the years and decades. We always assumed, well, that happens because of excess estrogen, which causes more menstrual bleeding and more cancer. Suppose estrogen were only a part of that picture, and the unspoken part of the problem all this time was their iron deficiency anemia caused by excessive bleeding. What about that? Suppose iron deficiency anemia were a predisposing factor for cancer. Oh my goodness. Think of all the people who could be so easily helped. So. Is there evidence that iron has been useful against cancer? Yes, here are some studies. This one discusses multiple myeloma. And this one discusses the role that iron plays in killing pancreatic, kidney, and liver cancers, as well as lymphocytoma. The name for that killing of cancer by iron is ferroptosis, which is a little different than natural cell death, apoptosis, or another cell death, necrosis. 
Ferroptosis is when a cell dies due to iron, and research has shown that in a variety of cancers. Well, it's that time again. Time for me to show you some foods high in iron. As in so many of these videos, beef liver tops the list. Here's a photo from Omaha Steaks. Chicken livers are smothered in onions in this photo from the BBC. And here's spinach in this photo from Organic Facts. All of these are high in iron. As always, thank you so much to the Sigma Aldrich Company for their very helpful metabolic pathways chart, enabling us to show you how all this works. And that wraps up this video on iron as a tool against cancer. Hmm, does that take us back to the Iron Age using iron tools? Well, anyway, I am Dr. Colleen Huber, a naturopathic medical doctor in Tempe, Arizona. It is October 30, 2019, and thank you for watching.